Good morning, Zoom participants. I believe I've figured out the problem from yesterday, and I'm glad that you came back to join me today. Uh, we'll get started in a minute. There are still some people joining us at this time. Hello out there in Zoom land. Hello out there in, in Facebook land. I'm glad you're able to hear me. Thank you. Um, again, there are still a few people joining, so if you want to take this time to get your Bibles ready, if you would like to read along responsively with me for the morning psalms, the first psalm will be Psalm 96, and you can have that ready to go. Again, there are still some people who are signing in, so we will wait for them. Give them another minute or two. I am looking. See if there's anyone else in the waiting room. Right. Well, it looks like I have opened up everything. So, let's go ahead and get started this morning. Let's start with a moment of silence to open our hearts, open our ears to hear the word this morning. Let us pray. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Through Jesus, let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God, the fruit of the lips that acknowledge God's name. Amen. Our opening psalm this morning, if you have your Bibles handy, is Psalm 96. We will be reading the entire psalm. Um, we'll do it as responsive reading. I will read verse 1, and together we will read verse 2. I'll read the odd verses, and we will read the even verses together. Again, I'm reading from the New International Version. If you have a different version, please read along anyway. Different translations can help us to have better understanding by hearing the different options. Psalm 96. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Praise his name. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among all the nations. His marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of nations. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. The world is firmly established 
it cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let the sea resound and all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Then all the trees of the forest will sing for joy. They will sing before the Lord, for he comes. He comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in truth. Our second hymn this morning, or second psalm this morning, is number 148. This is in the group of praise psalms that are the last five or six psalms in the book. We will be reading the entire chapter, Psalm 148. Again, we'll read responsibly. I will read verse 1, and we'll read verse 2 together, and so on. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights above. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his heavenly hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the skies. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He set them in place forever and ever. He gave a decree that will never pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all ocean depths. Lightning and hail, snow and clouds, stormy winds that do his bidding. You mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, small creatures and flying birds, kings of the earth and all nations, you princes and all rulers on earth, young men and maidens, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His splendor is above the earth and the heavens. He has raised up for his people a horn, the praise of all his saints, of, of Israel, the people close to his heart. Praise the Lord. Our Old Testament lesson this morning, we are still in the book of Leviticus, um, chapter 23. Um, we will be reading verses 1 through 22, which is a good portion of this book, or of this chapter, um, talking about some of the feasts and festivals that the Lord is setting uh, and telling Moses to let the people of Israel know on how to celebrate them. So Leviticus chapter 23, verses 1 through 22. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, These are my appointed feasts, the appointed feasts of the Lord, which you are to proclaim as sacred assemblies. There are six days when you may work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of rest, a day of sacred assembly. You are not to do any work. Wherever you live, it is a Sabbath to the Lord. These are the Lord's appointed feasts, the sacred assemblies you are to proclaim at their appointed times. The Lord's Passover begins at twilight on the 14th day of the first month. On the 15th day of that month, the Lord's Feast of Unleavened Bread begins. For seven days you must eat bread made without yeast. On the first day, hold a sacred assembly and do no regular work. 
For seven days, present an offering made to the Lord by fire. And on the seventh day, hold a sacred assembly and do no regular work. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, When you enter the land I am going to give you, and you reap its harvest, bring to the priest a sheaf, a sheaf of the first grain you harvest. He is to wave the sheaf before the Lord so that it will be accepted on your behalf. The priest is to wave it on the day after the Sabbath. On the day you wave the sheaf, you must sacrifice as a burnt offering to the Lord, a lamb a year old without defect, together with its grain offering of two-tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil, an offering made to the Lord by fire, a pleasing aroma, and its drink offering of a quarter of a hin of wine. You must not eat any bread or roasted or new grain, until the very day you bring this offering to your God. This is to be a lasting ordinance for the generations to come, wherever you live. Again, a way of giving thanks for the first fruits of the harvest. From the day after the Sabbath, the day you brought the sheaf of, wave, of the wave offering, count off seven full weeks. Count off 50 days up to the day after the seventh Sabbath, and then present an offering of new grain to the Lord. From wherever you live, bring two loaves made of two-tenths of an ephah of fine flour baked with yeast as a wave offering of first fruits to the Lord. Present with this bread seven male lambs, each a year old and without defect, one young bull and two rams. They will be a burnt offering to the Lord, together with their grain offerings and drink offerings, an offering made by fire, an aroma pleasing to the Lord. Then sacrifice one male goat for a sin offering, and two lambs, each a year old, for a fellowship offering. The priest is to wave the two lambs before the Lord as a wave offering, together with the bread of the first fruits. They are a sacred offering to the Lord for the priest. On that same day, you are to proclaim a sacred assembly and do no regular work. This is to be a lasting ordinance for the generations to come, wherever you live. When you reap the harvest of your land, do not reap to the very edges of your field or gather the gleanings of your harvest. Leave them for the poor and the alien. I am the Lord your God. Although we do not offer burnt offerings anymore, we still need to offer thanks for the gifts that we've been giving, for the fruits of the garden, the fruits of labor, the fruits that we harvest in the fall. And when we talk about... Um, leaving the edges of the fields for the poor and the alien, the emphasis in that is to not grab everything for yourselves, but to remember that there should be something for people who need that extra benefit. So our New Testament lesson is from... Second Thessalonians, letter from Paul to that church, uh, the second letter. Uh, yesterday we read the opening, and today we will be reading chapter 2, uh, the entire chapter in Second Thessalonians. Concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered to him, we ask you, brothers, not to become easily unsettled or alarmed by some prophecy, report, or letter supposed to have, been, to have come from us, saying that the day of the Lord has already come. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way, 
for that day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed to destruction. He will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worshipped, so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming to be God. Don't you remember that when I was with you, I used to tell you these things, and now you know what is holding him back, so that he may be revealed at the proper time. For the secret power of lawlessness is already at work, but the one who now holds it back will continue to do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will overthrow with the breath of his mouth and destroy by the splendor of his coming. The coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with the work of Satan, displayed in all kinds of counterfeit miracles, signs, and wonders, and in every sort of evil that deceives those who are perishing. They perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. For this reason, God sent them a powerful delusion so that they will believe the lie, and so that all will be condemned who have not believed the truth, but have delighted in wickedness. But we ought always to thank God for you, brothers loved by the Lord, because from the beginning God chose you to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Spirit and through belief in the truth. He called you to this through our gospel, that you might share in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, brothers, stand firm and hold to the teachings we passed on to you, whether by word of mouth or by letter. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope, encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good word and deed. Our gospel lesson this morning is from the book of Matthew, chapter 7. We are continuing in the Sermon on the Mount. Um, yesterday, we read the section about not, wor not worrying over things to the point where it gets in the way of hearing what God has for you. Today we're going to be talking about judgment. So Matthew chapter 7, and we'll be reading verses 1 through 12. Do not judge, or you too will be judged. For the sa in the same way you judge others, you will be judged, and with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when all the time there is a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Do not give dogs what is sacred. Do not throw your pearls to pigs. If you do, they will trample them under your feet and then turn and tear you to pieces. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks the door will be opened. Which of you, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven 
give good gifts to those who ask him. So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to our God. As we come in prayer this morning, I'll be reading from the Friday morning prayer from the Book of Prayers. Let us join in prayer. Redeeming God, we give you thanks that through the gift of our baptism, you have clothed us in your grace and made us heirs of your promise. By the power of the Holy Spirit, set us free from all that we fear and let us live according to our faith. Eternal God, we praise you for your mighty love, given in Christ's sacrifice on the cross and the new life we have received by his resurrection. Especially, we thank you for ministries of teaching and pastoral care. We thank those who work to help and to heal. We thank you for sacrifices that others have made for our benefit. We thank you for opportunities for our generous giving. We thank you for the lovely weather today, the bright sun and the warm breezes. We thank you for the presence of Christ in our weakness and suffering. And people of God, for what else do we give thanks this morning? God of grace, let our concern for others reflect Christ's self-giving love, not only in our prayers, but also in our practice, especially we pray for the church in Latin America. We pray for a right relationship between humans and the earth. We pray for those who are wounded, those who are ill, or face death. We pray for those who keep watch over the sick and the dying. We pray for reverence for the gift of life that you offer. We pray for Jeff, Jennifer's brother, as he's recovering from surgery. And we pray for the family of Harriet as they mourn her loss. And people of God, for what else do we pray? Almighty God, you have made us in your image and crowned us with honor and glory. Shape us by your word and fill us with your spirit so that we may live as your beloved children and proclaim your saving love to our life's end. And then we pray the prayer that you taught your disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, friends. Thank you for joining me this morning for morning prayer. Uh, morning prayer will be resuming on Monday. There will not be a service tomorrow morning. Um, I would also invite you not just to join us Monday at 930 for morning prayer service, but Sunday at 10 o'clock for our regular worship service. And as we go, go with this blessing. Like good stewards of the grace of God, let us serve one another with whatever gifts we have received. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. Thank you for your patience with me this week. If I choose to do this again, I hope it goes a little more smoothly. Peace be with you and also with all of you.